Well, hello everyone. This is Robert from my hobby channel, Black Belt Gaming. I had promised you a look at ghost stories, and I'm going to start delivering that tonight. I've opened up the box and I've set up the board, and I've given the rules a quick read through. I've decided to try to play a solo adventure here using one priest just so that I can learn how the mechanics work. I don't know if playing with one priest is easier or harder, but I'm trying to play on the easiest level of difficulty with one priest to keep it simple, and we'll see how it goes. Well, how about a little guided tour of the playing area? Our main centerpiece is made up of the nine village tiles and based on a little video I saw recommending a strategy uh, I decided to put the Buddha tile uh, in the center that's probably not the official name for it Buddhist temple yes it's in the center tile and I'm going to be playing the uh, yellow priest around the board you see the different colors these would belong to the other players if I were playing with two three uh, two or three other people. The green is here, the blue is over there, and the red is to my right. Those are going to be considered neutral boards. So they will go through certain steps of the game, but they won't have their own piece, and there are no other uh, priests on the board to help me out. Over here in the upper left, uh, that's a little saucer filled with uh, one die, it's a cursed die, and then a bunch of uh, ghost figures that represent uh, haunting. Over here uh, are some tokens that I'm not really making much use of. Those are primarily used when the other players of the other colors uh, are involved. If I go down, this is my yellow board, and I'm going to start the game on the easiest level. That means I'm going to have four chi points. These are my health or hit points here. And the other boards around the table, this is yellow, the green, the blue, and the red, they also are starting with uh, four chi points also. Uh, when they lose all of their health, uh, a board becomes possessed and I can no longer make use of its uh, powers. Now, my, my board is yellow because I'm using the yellow priest. And I'm making use of a power, uh, what is it called, deep pockets. And at the beginning of each of my turns, I can take uh, a Tao token. Uh, one, of, one of these, a yellow, a red, a green, a blue, or a black. I can take one of those from the supply and not a, not a chi token, just a Dao token. And I can put that into my stack here. So that's my special ability. If I spend one of these uh, power tokens, I can make use of a, a power from another priest's uh, card. So I might be able to use the green priest's power or the red, uh, any one I want to. I'll explain a little bit more about that as we start to play. But that's how the game is set up and just over here to the right I've got my stack of ghost cards and my dice ready to go. The dice are used to uh, fight the ghost in an attempt to exercise them from the board. And uh, setting this up for the, uh, the solo game I took one, uh, what was it, incarnation of Wu Fing, who is the, the big bad guy. He's ready to be placed into the deck. So what I, what I do now is just give these cards uh, a gentle shuffle. That was pretty bad, wasn't it? I'm trying to be so easy with them and not bend them too much. I'm supposed to take 15 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's what you do in a solo game. 
and then you take this incarnation card and put it there. Uh, that's who you've got to get rid of to win the game, I believe. And then all of these ghosts go on top. And this is going to form your, uh, your ghost deck. So I'm going to put it over here in this little box. And draw my ghosts from over there. I've got my, my action dice there. And I'm about ready to begin. So we'll get started with turn one. Well, here you can see on the back of the main rule book uh, our basic starting turn sequence. We start with the yin phase, the ghosts. The very first thing we do is allow all the ghosts to have their actions completed. Since this is our first turn, we don't have any ghosts on the board. The second thing you would do on a turn is check to see if your board is overrun. That means, does your board, uh, is it filled with three ghosts at this time? And if it is, that means you lose one chi token. If your board is not overrun, you have uh, two ghosts on there or less, then another ghost will arrive. And that's what's going to happen to us. A ghost is on its way. From the Ghost Stories deck, I draw a ghost card. And we have a Raging One. Looks like a pretty nasty horned demon of some kind. He's red, and that means that he's going to be placed on the uh, red board that's directly uh, above this, uh, this box. I'm going to need to, in attempt to exercise this ghost, I would need to roll and try to accumulate four um, red circles to take him out. And you notice there's only three dice here. That's what these Dao tokens are for. Uh, if you have a red token, it, it will fill one of those circles. So if I had you know, four of these, I could, I could take him out without even rolling the dice. I think it's always better to try to roll the dice and, and save your tokens for filling in uh, any of those spots that you missed. So uh, here are some abilities down here. We'll talk more about that later. But what I need to look at right now is this space here. And there's nothing there. That means as he comes into play, uh, nothing special happens. So he's just going to come into play and take his position on the board. So as I move up and we see Red's board there, I can put him anywhere, uh, any of the three spaces. Um, I've heard it's a pretty good strategy to put the uh, less powerful ghosts on the corners because if you uh, have your priest here you can try to fight this one and this one uh, at the same time. But it's so early in the game um, maybe, maybe we'll just start by putting him uh, here on the corner anyway even though he's certainly not a weak ghost. And that will finish uh, the yin phase. So then we're going to move into the yang phase for the Taoist priest. The yang phase, the Taoist phase, what, what happens there? Well, uh, the first thing you want to do is choose to move your priest if you want to move them from their current location. So let's take a look at that first. The power that I've chosen for my priest, the yellow priest, is called Bottomless Pockets. And it says that the yellow Taoist is never short of mystical components. Before his move, he may take a Tao token of any color among those available in the supply. Well, I happen to have a Taoist token now of each of the different colors. We've got the sticky rice and the incense and the bell, the mirror and, and the coins. So I can choose. Uh, since I know that over this way we have a big bad red guy, I think I'll choose to take some more incense. That'll give me two. Well here you can see my priest at the Buddhist temple. And movement. When you move your priest, you can move them 
one tile in any direction, so diagonal movement is just fine. I think what I may want to try to do is uh, I have two red DAO tokens now. Maybe I want to take a move this way and go to this tile. What that will do is it will allow me to battle a ghost that may be here or one that's over there. So since I've made my move, uh, let's see what's next. Well after you make a move, in step two you can request help from a villager or attempt an exorcism. Each of these uh, village tiles has a village, uh, villager on it and they can help you if you request aid from them. Uh, you can do that as your main action after you move. Each of the village tiles offers you some help in a different way and there's a nice uh, reference card that comes with the game that tells you what each of those uh, tiles will do. So let's take a look at the tile that I'm on uh, what is it called? Let's see. It's called the Pavilion of the Heavenly Winds. And let's see what uh, kind of help she can offer. The uh, flavor text there says, Behind the diaphanous veils of its pavilion, the Mistress of the Winds commands the elements, moving Taoists and ghosts as she pleases diaphanous. Yeah, there, there's a word I'm going to be teaching in my ESL classes here in Japan. <laughs> Alright, uh, move a ghost. This is, this is what she can do. Move a ghost of your choice to any free space. This space may be occupied by a Buddha figurine. Then move a Taoist, not yours. However, since I'm playing a solo game with one priest, I can move my Taoist. And you can move them to any village tile. It says, note, when the ghost moves, all his properties follow him. Uh, power, deactivation marker, enfeeblement, mantra, etc. The potential haunting figurine then is placed in the same relative position. Uh, we'll see a little bit more about that soon, I'm sure. But uh, if you move a ghost on top of a Buddha figure, and a Buddha figure might be placed down here on the board, if they go on top of that Buddha figure, they are automatically destroyed and, and sent to hell. And then the Buddha figure returns back to the Buddhist temple. So you have to move to that spot and pick it up on one of your turns. That's how that villager helps you when you're on at the Buddhist temple. So I don't really have a need to make use of this uh, villager's ability right now. I don't need to uh, move the ghost. I think what I need to try to do is exercise it. Well, to get rid of that raging one, I'm going to need four uh, red circles. Let's give the dice a roll. Not bad. Red, red, and then you see this white the white one is actually a wild die and you can make that to be any color that you wish or need it to be and I'm gonna say red that leaves me one shy so I can now use one of my Tao tokens the incense and that gives me the four red I need to send the raging one to hell now this particular uh, ghost never got to use its uh, middle ability here. If it had stayed on the board and another round had gone by, uh, or this round had finished and the next one had started, and uh, we were at the ghost's abilities, this would have activated. This is the middle section of the card for a ghost. And I would have had to have rolled uh, a cursed die, which is bad. But over here, this is uh, usually usually positive I guess I, I haven't seen too many of the cards yet but this is our reward because we exercise this demon this ghost uh, we get to choose whether to heal ourselves or take a, a, a chi token 
or recover our uh, yin yang token which we haven't even spent yet so let's take the extra chi that's going to give us uh, five hit points so that's going to go into our pile right there and I'm going to make this little spot right here hell <laughs> so exercise ghosts are just going to go right there this uh, Dow token is used so that goes back to the supply there we go so we've completed step one we moved we've completed step two we attempted an exorcism and the final step in the yang phase is to place a buddha figure if you have one well currently both of the buddha figures are at the temple so i do not have a buddha figure to place so that is going to end uh, my first turn.